For years, Volkswagen as a group have been spending billions of dollars on software. They actually went into a joint venture partnership in addition to that with Ford to try to make artificial intelligence cars that could drive themselves. That venture ended in, well, they shut it down. All the employees of that venture are now gone. They were all fired. It was closed. And after all these, all this investments and spending on full self-driving and car software, the carrier division in Germany, for example, Volkswagen as a group have gone, you know what, Xpeng, um, can you fix it for us? We'll use yours. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. I don't have the new Turing chip in my Xpeng car. But new Xpeng vehicles will use this new Turing chip, which has six times the power of Tesla's full self-driving chip. It's the most powerful full self-driving chip in the world. And it was manufactured in-house, which is pretty spectacular. Xpeng have begun putting it in their cars. And they say that all of their cars in future will use this Turing artificial intelligence chip, which is going to enable their cars to you know, drive themselves. The cars already have pretty good for self-driving. It's not quite as good as Tesla's but, Tesla's, but it's pretty good. But this new chip is said to give them the ability to potentially leapfrog many rivals. Xpeng are going to integrate their Turing chip along with their software into Volkswagen's models within the next 12 months. And the funny thing is, this chip is meant to be so good that other automakers are asking Xpeng if they can use it as well. I haven't heard that said about Tesla's full self-driving chip, so that's really an interesting situation. Xpeng are saying that their in-house developed Turing AI artificial intelligence smart driving chip will be open to partners and Volkswagen are going to be the first to start using it. The company is working to integrate its Turing chip into some of the models that Volkswagen will launch in China next year. And then I'm going to guess that they're going to uh, do the same thing with other models as well. And really, which model would you want? Would you want, would you want Volkswagen car, a Volkswagen car with their current uh, com computer system software and, and driving chips? Or would you prefer to use Xpeng? I'm pretty sure the answer is obvious. Developing chips is fundamentally a long-term commitment as Xpeng envisions doing a lot of things across cars, aircraft, and robotics, said the CEO of the company in an interview with The Times. We need a type of chip that can support these platforms and also power our AI large language model. So it's not just the chip. If Volkswagen really wants the really what is going to be the true brains behind the chip, they need the language. They need access to Xpeng's language model. And I'm guessing that that's probably part of the deal. And considering Xpeng now own 5%, considering the Volkswagen Group actually own 5% of Xpeng, I'm guessing that's one of the perks the Volkswagen Group will probably get. The company is also in talks to supply chips through other automakers, they've said. We are looking for long-term partners, they've confirmed. And following this interview with the CEO, Xpeng clarified talks that Volkswagen and other companies' discussions are ongoing, and the Financial Times said that there's apparently other automakers that have been discussing this with Xpeng as well. As announced, Volkswagen and Xpeng are jointly developing two Volkswagen cars for the mid-class segment. Both parties contribute their respective strength. These are launching next year, said a spokesperson from the Volkswagen Group. Xpeng actually debuted the G7, and I've done a video on the G7. If you want to see my video, I'll put a link in the description. The G7, the X9, the new G9, which I have driven, the new P7 Plus, which I have driven as well. I've done reviews on those. They have this new Turing AI chip. And it means that Xpeng has by far the fastest, basically by far the most powerful computing system for any car in the world. In fact, the Ultra variant, it actually comes equipped with three of these chips. So having three of them means it's delivering more than 2,200 tops of effective computing power, making the G7 the world's first AI car to potentially achieve level three compute, said Xpeng. Three Turing AI chips can power both the autonomous driving models and the cockpit models, 
with AI computing power 26 times greater than well rivals. And I mean, considering there's three of these chips, it means that actually Xpeng's uh, computing power in their cars with their three chips, three Turing chips is approximately 20 times more powerful than Tesla's full self-driving. Now, does that mean it's going to be better than Tesla's full self-driving? Not necessarily, because it's not just the actual computing power that um, you know makes the actual system work. It's, it's everything. It's the large language models. It's the information you're feeding it. There's lots of parameters. It's the sensors, how they all connect together. But Xpeng are going down the Tesla route and using vision only. They're saying that LiDAR isn't needed. But I should mention, they don't do what Tesla does and just use cameras. They do use other sensors as well, just not LiDAR. Volkswagen is one of Xpeng's key partners, announcing in July 2023 that it would invest 700 million US dollars in the Chinese EV maker and jointly develop electric cars with them. Now, another car company in China saying that they have also a super powerful chip is Neo. Neo say that their new their new chip has the same computing power as four NVIDIA Orin X chips, which are basically the best automotive grade chip that NVIDIA make. Can't confirm if that's accurate, but that's what they're saying. You can see here that Chinese automakers are not just building incredibly good electric cars at prices that no one can compete with. They're also focusing on the brains of the car. That's kind of scary if you're one of their rivals. Let me know what you think in the comments. Guys, I just traveled to China and test drove the new G9 electric SUV, the Xpeng G9 electric SUV. Now, apparently, I'm. some people are saying that Xpeng are, are paying me to do this. That just shows you that the, the industry is pretty, well, people are pretty naive on what actually happens in the industry. Journalists don't get paid to actually review cars. As far as I know, this doesn't happen at all in Australia, for even for the big guys. And as you guys know, I'm not quite at that level yet. That said, if you want to get this investigated by the Australian government, send them an email, send them hundreds of emails. You can all do it. Uh, you, can, you can get your buddies to do it. You can all jump in and send them thousands of emails. It's going to make no difference to me whatsoever. I'm going to get paid to do this, but I love doing it. It's a lot of fun to test your electric cars, especially when they are so incredibly good. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. It's great to have you with us. All right, guys, we're here with the G9. This is the new version. 2025, the brand new model. This is going to be coming to right-hand drive and left-hand drive markets around the world. I think it's one of the best-looking electric SUVs you can buy. Seriously luxurious car. I love the massage seats. I love the, uh, the whole chill function i love the fact that you can you can you can get one of these and you can change the air suspension settings at the back of the, the vehicle so that if you want to load stuff in heaps of cool features obviously 800 volt architecture can charge the battery in about 12 about 12 minutes which is crazy that's about 500 kilowatt charging speed so we're going to film this and drive around some streets in china we'll see we'll see how quick it is